This is Dr. B. In this video, we're going to look at examples of molecular geometry, bond angle, hybridization, and polarity for several molecules. In the last video, we looked at how the chemical formula kind of gives you some information about the number of atoms, but it doesn't really tell you about their arrangement in space. When we draw the Lewis structure, we've moved to a two-dimensional arrangement. Now we can see where the electrons are and the hydrogens are, all in relationship to the atoms involved. Once we have the Lewis structure, we can then figure out what the molecular geometry is, the shape in space, three dimensions. And we can do that with some fairly simple rules. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Look at the molecular geometry, bond angle, and hybridization, and the polarity based on that Lewis structure. So let's try some examples. The first step is to have a Lewis structure drawn. We have one right here for NH3. We can then write the molecule in a generic format to try to figure out its molecular geometry. Here, A represents the atom that we're interested in, in this case the N. X is the number of atoms bonded to the central molecule, or the one we're interested in, the H's in this case. In N, those are the non-bonding electrons and we're going to put those down in terms of pairs of non-bonding electrons. So here's our nitrogen, and then X, we have three atoms, one, two, three atoms bonded there, and non-bonding pairs of electrons, we have these right up here, so we'll put a one right here. We don't really need to leave the ones there, they're implied, so let's get rid of those. We can now look this up on a table, or if you've memorized the table in your brain, and see what the molecular geometry is for the molecule. This table has some of the more common geometries that we'll run across. So we look down the table, we're looking for AXN, and actually down at the bottom, AXN. That tells us the shape is trigonal pyramidal. And that's going to look like this we'll have a bond angles of 109.5 like that and our hybridization will be sp3 in terms of polarity we know that the nitrogen right here is more electronegative than the hydrogens that means it's going to be a little bit negative a little more negative and it'll be a polar molecule we show the negative side with this delta symbol and a negative and the delta positive down here to give you a general idea of the polarity of the molecule. So we have the molecular geometry, bond angle, hybridization, and polarity for NH3. Let's try another example. So for CH4, we have the Lewis structure over here, and we could also write it like this. In this case, this line represents a pair of shared electrons, just like over here. So those are the chemical bonds between the carbon and the hydrogen atom. So we can now write the generic format for this molecule. We have the carbon atom right there, and then we have atoms bonded to the carbon, one, two, three, four, or over here, one, two, three, four. So we have four of those. And then non-bonding electrons, well, each of the hydrogens is involved in a chemical bond, there's really no non-bonding electrons around the carbon, so we don't even need that right there. So we're left with the general format AX4, which we can then look up on our table. As we go down the table, we see that AX4 right here has a tetrahedral shape. That's going to look like this right here. We have the carbon in the center, and then we have these hydrogens on the outside. The bond angle is 109.5, and it's sp3 hybridized. When we look at polarity, we can see that the hydrogens are symmetrically distributed around the carbon, and that they all have the same electronegativity. In that case, there's no clear negative or positive side to the molecule, and we say that it's nonpolar. So there you have two examples of how you can use the Lewis structure to find the molecular geometry bond angle, hybridization, and polarity. The key is use the Lewis structure to find the generic format for the molecule, then look that up on a table, unless you need to have that memorized, and finally determine the polarity by looking how the elements are arranged around the central atom. 
if you have an electronegative element on one side, that's going to be a little bit more negative, and on the other side, positive. Unless they're all the same and the molecule's symmetrical. In that case, it'll be nonpolar because there's no difference in charge. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.